Hello and welcome to another new to Mac episode of Apple a Day. If you ever wanted to change the date and time settings in your Mac OS, specifically Sonoma, but got frustrated by how scattered the options are in system settings, well, you're not alone. They are all over the place. In today's video, I'm gonna cover the three different areas within system settings where you can find the date and time options. First, we'll be looking at general date and time, and that's where you'd think you'd find all the options, but there's more. And then next, we'll look at general language and region, and finally, control center clock options. So let's start with the obvious, date and time. So I've got system settings open, and even though we can quickly search for the specific setting, for example, up here on the left of the system settings window, I'll just type in date and time to find the page. Instead, I'm gonna show you where these settings are located within the hierarchy of the system settings window. So I'll click on the little X here to clear the search. So date and time is found in the general section of settings. So on the left of the system settings window, I'm gonna go down to general and select date and time from the list on the right. So there's really not a whole lot you're gonna to wanna to change here. I can't think of a reason to not set the date and time automatically. However, I will demonstrate this feature nonetheless. I'll turn off the option and it's asking for my password to change a system setting. So I'll just use touch ID. Once that's changed, a set button is added next to the displayed date and time. If I click on that set button, a window opens up, allowing me to specify both the date and the time. Pressing set will update the system date and time to the specified values. That's pretty straightforward. However, I do prefer the date and time to be set automatically, so I'm gonna turn this option back on. If you wanna change the source URL for the automatic date and time, you can click on this set button here and enter in a different URL. However, I see no reason to change it, so I'm gonna leave this at Apple's URL. Next, we have a section with options to display the time in 24 hour format, also known as military time. Watch the date and time right above this option. I'll turn it on and the AM PM is removed and the time is converted to 24 hour format. So five o'clock PM changes to 1700. Then we have another option to show the 24 hour format on the lock screen. Now that seems oddly specific to me. You'd think that the first checkbox to turn on the 24 hour format would be enough and that would make it system wide. But for some reason, there's a separate setting specific for the lock screen. So if you wanna see the 24 hour format on the lock screen, turn this option on. To see what this looks like on the lock screen, go to the Apple menu and select lock screen and that'll take us to the lock screen. And if you're not sure what the lock screen is, it's just the screen on the Mac that requires a password or touch ID to authenticate you as a valid user. And up here on the lock screen, you can see that the time is displayed in the 24 hour format. I'll just log in using touch ID. Note that you can also find this exact same option on the lock screen page of settings. I'll quickly jump down to the lock screen page and here you can see the option again. I'll turn it off here and then go back to general and into date and time, and then notice that that option is now turned off, proving it's the exact same setting. Moving to the bottom section, you have some more automation to do with the time. This is the option to set the time zone automatically. Again, I see no real reason to turn this off unless you want your clock to show in a different time zone. But if you do turn it off, instead of selecting the time zone by name, you have to select the nearest city which is associated to the desired time zone. I'll search for San Diego, and you can see that the time zone changes to Pacific Daylight Time. I'm gonna turn the automatic time zone back on, and you can see that it switches back to Eastern. So the date and time settings panel doesn't really contain a lot, but you would think that this is the obvious place to go if you wanted to change how the date and time are actually displayed. Well, we'll find more of those settings under Language and Region. I'm gonna click on this back button up here at the top of the settings window, and that'll take us back to General and then click on language and region. And in here you have settings for things like temperature, calendar type, measurement system, as well as some date settings. We're mostly interested in date format. Although here you can also change the first day of the week. This is another setting that's automatically set based on the selected region. So for instance, if I changed my region from Canada to say Caribbean Netherlands, which is right underneath Canada, that region has Monday as the first day of the week and the default date looks to be day, month, year. I'll change it back to Canada, 
and the first day of the week changes back to Sunday, and the default format changes to year month day. Of course, these can be overridden. You can change the first day of the week to anything you like, but unfortunately, you are limited in your date formats. If you've been using a Mac for a few years, you'll notice that the advanced date format settings have been removed as of Ventura, which is version 13 of the Mac OS. Here's some screenshots of these options in OS 12. You had total control over how the dates would appear. Now it's been reduced to only a handful of options, and some of them are right here in this date format dropdown, and the other options are in another location, which I'll get to shortly. So basically here, you have the option to choose year, month, day, month, day, year, day, month, year, all with a four digit or a two digit year. You can also choose the separator, whether it's a hyphen, a slash, or a period. So how do you tell the difference between day and month in this dropdown menu? Well, if the number is greater than 12, then it's referring to a day. So that's it for the date options in this section. Let's move to the final panel that has date and time settings. I'll move down a few items to control center within system settings. And in this section, I'm gonna scroll down on the right until I get to the menu bar only section. And this first item is clock. And these are the options for displaying the date and time on the top right of your menu bar. I'll click on clock options. And again, these are specific to the date and time and how they appear in the menu bar up here on the top right. I'm just gonna move this over so you can better see the changes I'm gonna to make to the date and time formatting in the menu bar. So the first option is to show the date. Mine is set to always, which is the default. And you can see it currently says Saturday, September 7th. If I change this to never, the date is removed and only the time is displayed. The option for when space allows is very useful if your monitor is a lower resolution and you have an application open with lots of menus. The date will be removed if other menus are taking up space. I'm gonna switch mine back to always. The next option is pretty obvious, show day of the week. Right now it's on and you can see that Saturday is displayed. If I turn this off, Saturday goes away, turning it back on, it comes back. Note that there's no way to spell out the full day of the week or the month. As I stated earlier, those options were removed a few OS versions ago. Okay, so quick side note. You might be wondering what that date format setting is used for. That setting I went over a moment ago that let you choose year, month, day, or month, day, year. Well, those are more of a system setting as to how dates are interpreted. It would be useful in applications like Apple Numbers, which lets you type in dates in a specified format. It's especially useful when there might not be an obvious way to tell the difference between month, day, year, and day, month, year. You could type in 0102, and that could mean January 2nd or February 1st. The date format setting helps determine the correct date. Also, a developer would use that setting to know how to display a date in its numerical format in their application. So moving on to the time section, this first option is the style. And right now it's set to digital. If I change it to analog, then we get a graphical image of an analog clock. I'm not a huge fan of that because it is pretty small. So I much prefer the time to be displayed digitally. So I'm gonna change that back. The next option toggles the display of AM, PM on or off. Pretty obvious what happens here. If I turn it off, the PM goes away. Turning it back on, it comes back. Obviously this would have no effect if I had the 24 hour clock turned on in the date and time settings. The next option, flash the time separators will flash the colon between the hour and the minutes for each second that passes. I'll leave this on for a moment and you can see it flashing on and off. The next option displays the seconds as well. I'll turn that on and now you can see it's displaying hours, minutes, and seconds. I'll turn off the flashing option and then the seconds option. So the next option is something I've never really used. You can have the Mac verbally announce the time at specified intervals. I'll turn this on. And then if I click on the interval dropdown menu, we have the option to have the time announced on the hour, the half hour, or the quarter hour. And from there, you can customize the voice. I'll click on that, and here you can choose a voice, a custom rate of speed in which it speaks, and a custom volume. You can play the current settings to test it out. I'll change this to Karen, and set the custom rate to be slow, and the volume to be louder. I'll press play, and... Hi, my name is Karen. Well, that doesn't sound so good. <laughs> I'll just press cancel so it doesn't save my changes. I'll just set this to the quarter hour so you can see what it does. It's six o'clock. I'm gonna turn that off because I don't really like that feature. And then I'll click on done. Okay, that's it. 
That's all you can do with date and time in system settings in macOS Sonoma. Hopefully you found this helpful and that it cleared up some confusion with date and time settings. I'm John Martins. Please like and subscribe and let me know in the comments if there's any Mac specific tutorial you'd like to see. Any interaction is great as it helps with the YouTube algorithm and keeps my channel growing. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode of Apple A Day.